hi let us discuss the solution of this problem so in this problem we are given two numbers l and r both are inclusive inclusive means that suppose we are given 4 and 7 then these two would also count okay find the product of the prime within this range okay and product should be modulo 10 to the power 9 plus 7 that is it is a very big prime number to prevent integer overflow if there are no primes in this range you should print one this is what you need to do so let us suppose 1 and 10 so let us see so 1 is not a prime number 2 is a prime number 3 is a prime number 4 is not a prime number 5 is a prime number 6 is not a prime number 7 is a prime number 8 is not a prime number 9 is not a prime number 10 is not a prime number so it would be 6 into 35 635 is equals to 210 okay now we would find this but as the product would be very large so that i won't be writing it now to solve this question you need to understand a algorithm that is known as prime sieve so let us now see what is prime sieve the so prime sieve is an algorithm to find the number of primes from 1 till the number n itself now how the second like next question how a prime sieve wo is working so we first have an array of size 20 and we declare everything as true true means everyone is prime okay so i would just write this so i would write this and i would say true and i would write this and i would write false okay Now what you need to do is you need to go to one and make it not prime. This is what you need to do it explicitly. Other than that, you don't need to do anything explicit. So you would just cross it out. Now you would start the iteration from two itself. So two is true as of now. So you would mark all the multiples of two as not prime. So you would go to two multiplied by two. That is four, not prime. Then two multiplied by three, that is six, not prime. Then six, eight, then ten, then twelve, then fourteen, then sixteen, then eighteen, then twenty. Now you would go to the next number, that is three. Three is still true. So if it is still true, then all the multiples of three would be marked as non-prime. Six is already marked as non-prime. Nine is not marked, so we would mark it. Then twelve is already marked. Fifteen is not marked. We would mark it. Eighteen is already marked, and then twenty-one is out of range. So we would now go to the next number, that is four. Four is not a prime number, so we won't do anything. Rather, just move forward. Then we come to five. Then the multiples of five are ten, fifteen, and twenty. That is already marked. Then we go to six. Multiples of six are twelve and eighteen that are within this range, which is already marked. So we would move forward. Then seven, fourteen is only there, that is there. So we won't do anything. Then this is not prime. This is not prime. This is not prime. Then eleven. Eleven multiplied by two is equals to twenty-two. So we won't move forward. We know that all the numbers be beyond this would have the multiple greater than twenty, which is out of this range. So what are the numbers that are remaining? The numbers that are remaining are Two, three, five, seven, eleven, thirteen, seventeen, and nineteen. So this is how you would find the prime number from point one to point n. Okay. So now let us quickly implement just this idea. Okay. So I already have the boilerplate code. So we would start from here. Okay. So we would find the prime numbers from one to hundred. So we would have hundred and one, and then we would do mem set of a comma zero of a comma one comma size of a itself. So we have done everything as true. Everything is prime as of now. Then we explicitly need to declare zero and one as false. False. It is done. Next, we move forward. 
and then we start the iteration from two. Int i is equals to two. I is less than hundred and one and i plus plus. Okay. Now if if a of i is equals to true, that if it is a prime number, then all the multiples of that would be marked as not prime. So we would use again a for loop int j is equals to i multiplied by two and j is less than hundred and one and j plus equals to i. That is if the iteration. So just let me visualize this. Suppose i suppose i is equals to two at this point. Then j would at first be two into two that is four, and then j plus i at the next iteration. So four plus two is equals to six. Then again eight, then again ten, and this would go off till hundred. So that is how we are proceeding. Next, what we would do is a of i would be marked as false itself. After that, we need to find all the primes. So what we can do is we can have a vector at this point, and we can find all the prime vector of int, and we would name it as p. And if this particular condition is true, that means it would remain true because after that we would surpass this. So p dot push back the particular i itself, and then we would use a for each loop to print all of them. C out e with and this is done, and we would just print this. Okay, so these are all the prime numbers from one till hundred itself. So this is how the whole code of prime c would look like. Okay, now. We would discuss the idea when we want the range to be from L to R. Now, let us talk about the constraints too. So, if we talk about the constraints, then there are two ways to solve this problem. The first way to solve this problem is that we would find till R. Okay, we would find till R. So, the first idea is find. Prime till r itself. So we would find the prime till r. Then we would print all the primes from L to r. But here in this question, r is very very big. So making an array of that size and then again iterating over them is not feasible in both either in time complexity in space complexity too. So what we need to do is we need to understand the idea known as Segmented C vector. Now, in segmented C, what you need to do is you need to find all primes till root of R. That is the upper bound L and R. R is the upper bound. We find all the primes till L and R. Then what we do is. We would find the multiple of them in the given one. Okay, so now let us quickly find the prime numbers from ten to twenty itself. So all the prime numbers less than twenty are okay. Root twenty. So root twenty is nothing but four itself. Four point something. So we would just have the four itself. So one, two, three, four. So we have two and three as the prime numbers. So next we would have ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. Now what we would do is all the multiples of two that are within this range we would mark them as false. So this would be marked as false, 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 false. Then multiples of three would be marked as false. So we come across twelve that is already marked. Then we come across fifteen that is all we need to mark it. Then eighteen is already marked and twenty one is out of this range. So all the numbers that are remaining is eleven, thirteen, seventeen, and nineteen. This is what we need to do. So we need to find all the primes, okay, till the root of r that is the floor value of it. Okay, four point something would be there. So we took four. Then we find all the primes till four, and then we mark all the multiples of those primes that are within this range. This is what you need to do. Now, as I've already implemented the basic idea of prime C, then again implementing the whole code would be very tough. 
So I would just show you the whole phone itself. So first we find the prime numbers. So what we do is we find that if it is not prime, we would push that and then all the multiples of them would be marked as not prime. So all of them would be marked as composite and this is prime. After we have find them, this is L is equals to R plus plus. Why this is done? Because we have from 1 till 5, but we already know that 1 is not a prime number. So we would move forward and make it 2 and 5 because that won't affect the answer itself. Then we have R minus L plus 1 because we need just the range itself. So how would we have this range? So we can have this range like this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 till this 10. And then we can add 10 at each of them. So if we add 10 here, this would remain 10. This would be 11. This would be 12. Just like we do for the ASCII code. Then we move forward. Then all of them, if it is within this range, we would first find the first number which is lying within this range. And then we would add that, make it within this range. And then we would mark all of those in that thing. We are subtracting this because we want the index of the difference array. Okay. Then what we are doing here is we are multiplying them and we are finding the modulo of it. Okay. So if 5 into 5 is 25, then we are again making it modulo 10. But here it is 10 to the power 9 plus 7. So we are finding the modulo and then we are returning all of those that are there. So that's it for today. Thank you and have a nice day.